helps to do it to some. Okay. And a quick reminder for uh, for the attendees: when you come late into the presentation, please close the door gently so not to distract the speaker and uh, the listeners. Thank you. Look at something else. See ya. And so it's time. Uh, everybody, yeah, so it's time for the next presentation. All right, I got Levin to li Can you hear me? Testing, you can hear me in the back? Am I muting? Oh. As you see, I just got rid of Leonard so I can talk about him. <sighs> Bad mouth him. That's not playing. No sound. Okay, so my name is Dan Walsh. I'm in charge of the container team at Red Hat. Um, and uh, I started working on containers about two years ago. And one of my goals at that time was to get SystemD to work well with containers. Um, and it's been an interesting uh, uh, task, to say the least. Um, so the, the problem is we have two guys that are head of the Two teams. We have Solomon Hikes, who's in charge of Docker. He's the uh, chief technology officer there, um, basically the guy that created it. And we have Leonard, okay, Leonard Pottering. Um, and neither one of them is willing to compromise much. Uh, so I get stuck in the middle. So it's it's been an interesting experience, and I'm going to tell you what's going on and where we are. So is, uh, this is a somewhat dated reference, but uh, back in uh, LA, this guy got beat up by the cops and caused huge riots back in the, the 90s and named Rodney King, but he came out, can't we, he, after it was all along, he said, can't we just get all, all just get along? And that's really what I, I'm after with this. So let's look, when I, we talk about System D and Docker working together, we have to look at different, uh, different components. So really, I'm, I'm talking about all, for, all ways. So, so Docker Daemon runs inside of his Unifile. How does that work? How can we, um, and then eventually get systemd to run inside of a Docker container? An interesting concept when you start running, building containers, you want to, say, run them in, in a Unifile. Say you have a service you want to run. Um, who owns Restart? Right? Systemd wants to own Restart. Docker wants to own Restart. I should have said it in the beginning. In a lot of ways, Docker wants to be system D. It dreams. It dreams of being system D. Basically, it wants to control all its processes, monitor all its processes, um, really build in a lot of functionality that system D did. But one interesting problem happens is, you know, I want to put my you know, Apache service inside of a Docker container, and I want to run it in a Unifile. So the question is, who owns the restart if the, if the application goes down? You can do auto restart in Docker, or you can put you Docker run it in the uh, Unifile with auto restart. The problem is restarting the Docker daemon stops all containers. So one of the fundamental problems with Docker, in my opinion right now, is if I stop the Docker, contain, uh, Docker daemon, all your containers go down. So if you yum update and Docker gets updated, all your containers will get zapped. Uh, but when Docker goes down, since it kills all your containers, if you want your container to restart, systemd won't know about it because it only sees the client, right? So you want to put your restart in the Docker daemon. So you want to, if you're going to do a auto restart for your application, you need to do it in the Docker daemon. Everybody know what SD notify is? Nobody, a huh? few people. So SD notify, when you're building an application, say you're building a service that other services are going to rely on, just having the, dark, uh, the unifile, uh, say, you know, service started is not good enough. 
because the service might not be fully up at the time that they, your secondary service uh, starts. So say you had a MariaDB database and a web front end, and you wanted to make sure the database is up before the web front end starts. You need to, the, the MariaDB has to be fully up and functioning before the sec secondary service uh, starts. So uh, System D provides a service called SD Notify. So an application, if it's built for System D, will actually call SD Notify when it's fully up and running. So you put it into MariaDB code or something like that to say it's SD Notify. So what happens when you run that in a, in a container? Well, the problem is Docker, well, Docker does, uh, Docker itself, the Docker daemon does SD not Notify now. Um, uh, I'm jumping ahead. All right, so, so uh, the Docker daemon does SD Notify. There's also the idea of socket activation. I'll get back to SD Notify in a second. Socket activation. This is another feature of System D in that you can basically tell System D to listen on a Unix domain socket or actually a network port listening for incoming connections and then start the service. So you don't have to have all your services running um, at boot time. So for instance, you could set up SSH daemon to listen, uh, have system D listen to port 22 and SSH daemon come up when someone actually connects to the port. Docker daemon can do socket activation. All right, so we used to have our run socket, docker.soc, uh, as a docker soc, uh, socket activated application. There's a problem with that though. We've disabled it because it breaks auto start, auto restart inside of Docker. If you set up a socket activation for Docker, that means Docker will not start until someone actually connects to the socket. And it's only admins that are going to connect to the socket. So there used to be a Docker socket, but we got rid of it because your auto restarts weren't happening if you wanted to have an application start at boot time. So system D working with Docker containers. SD Notify, this is what the slide I thought we were covering. Okay, so SD Notify, uh, as I said, it works inside of Docker, but I really like that to work inside of my application. So if I had that MariaDB example and I put it inside of a Docker container, what we wanted to get is the do SD Notify, the MariaDB is up and running, out to System D to say it's up and running. The problem is the Docker is a client server operation. So System D requests SD Notify to the Docker client. The Docker client then talks to the Docker daemon. So we wanted to have the client send the SD Notify message to the server. Then the server would have to set up the container to do SD Notify. So we would basically mimic System D and set up SD Notify inside of the container. Then the container would get noticed. Uh, the server gets SD Notify from the container. So now MariaDB would send SD Notify back up the chain to the server, to the um, do Docker daemon. And then the server would send SD Notify back to the client. Then the client would SD Notify back to System D. How's that sound for a complex uh, way of doing SD Notify? The patches were not accepted by Docker. <laughs> OK. So SD Notify will not work using standard Docker containers. It don't work. All right, the problem is that message has to get all the way back to system D, and since the container is a child of the Docker daemon, since the Docker daemon controls the container, life's over. How about socket activation for your services? The way socket activation works in a uh, system D is system D actually listens for an incoming connection, right? We talked uh, either at Unix domain, and it will actually ex um, accept the call. So system D will accept the call, and then it's going to do exactly what the system, uh, it would then, on our normal services, would, uh, would exec a program and would leak the file descriptor into the application. So the open socket, say you just set up Apache to, to uh, be socket activated. When Apache came up, system D would listen, accept the connection on port 80, would then exec um, HTTPD and would leak the socket, leak the open socket into the uh, Apache service. But because Docker is a client server application, your client would get leaked into it. So theoretically, we'd have to go through that same procedure, except this time we would have to actually pass the open socket somehow to the daemon and then have the daemon leak it. So we didn't even try this one. 
All right, so socket activation will not work. Now you can have applications that will start as long as it, it's willing to drop the first packet, then it can come up with a socket activator, but if it's a Docker client, it won't work. C group configurations inside of Docker containers. Docker wants to be system D, so it wants to manage the C groups. System D wants to manage the C groups. So if you put Docker run into a unit file and you set up the C groups inside the unit file to say the memory limits, things like that, that will affect the Docker client. You will have the Docker client only able to use, you know, half a gig of memory or only able to use CPU. But it will send, it will start the container and the container will get Docker daemon's C group constraints by default or it will get constraints set by Docker daemon. So you modify uh, C group settings inside of a unified via system control affects the client, not the processes inside of the container. Again, because it's a client server operation. Run C, if you were at the previous talk, we talked that was mentioned of Run C. Run C is the Open Container Initiative's <coughs> implementation of the Open Container specification for running containers. So Run C is slowly being adopted into Docker as its, run, as its default runtime. Run C also uses libcontainer. So Run C right now uses libcontainer. Docker uses libcontainer. Eventually, Docker is supposed to, or theoretically will, exec the Run C command. But we are packaging up Run C in Fedora now, and probably in the Docker 110 time frame, it will show up in, um, in RHEL. So what Run C can do is we can actually take a JSON file and have it launch containers. Run C from Open uh, it does not work in the client server model, so Run C ends up, the container ends up a child of the Run C process. Run C content is in, we can put it in a unit file and it works well with system D. We got patches merged to support SD notify in Run C. We got patches uh, to do socket activation have also been merged in, uh, in in run C. You, if you modify the C group settings of a unit file that is running run C, it will affect the container, as well as you can use system control to modify it. So if you want your containers to run, if you want to use a container and run it on the system and have it managed by system D, you could use run C as a potential alternative. Docker logs. Journal D support. Logging your containers, output from Docker. So right now, standard Docker, when you, when you do it, it has a built-in logging system in the container. So anything the container writes to standard out or standard error is logged inside of Docker. The problem is if you remove a container from the system, Docker wipes out all memory of that container ever existing. So the logs get wiped out. Obviously, being a security guy, I don't like logs disappearing. So I would like to know what that container did on my system. And all you have to, if you just remove the container, it's gone. As of Docker 1.9, we've added journal D support. So you can basically specify uh, a log driver being journal D, which means that all logging information will end up in the journal and will be permanently there. You can go back and look at it uh, at any time in the future. And any tools that offload journals, things like that will work. Fedora Rawhide covering Fedora 24, we're going to make Journal D the default. And I think of the Docker 110 time frame, if everything goes well, we'll make it the default in RHEL also. <coughs> System D in the base image. Okay, this is a long story. So this uh, has been, always been a question about whether we wanted System D in the base image or not. So this is the Fedora base image, the RHEL base image, or the CentOS base image. Our goal with the base images is always to be minimal size. Okay, we want to have the things as small as possible. So the question is whether you put system D in there. The problem when we uh, first started doing base images is that, is that applications that we're installing into the container always bring system D in. The reason they're bringing system D in is that they actually are requiring system D control. So any package like Apache in its post install, it's going to do a you know, reload of the container, uh, reload of the service if it's running. So it requires system D. So it's a packaging issue that causes us always to have to have system D inside of the container. Since we wanted, uh, if, when system D got put into the container, it brought in a lot of stuff with it. 
like you did. Okay, and other crap that you really, all sorts of kernel features, all sorts of things that need, were required for the kernel but aren't required for uh, running in system D. So we wanted to basically get a version of system D that didn't bring in all this other stuff. So the first version we came out with, we came out with this thing called fake system D. And this, this guy who's kind of sometimes not too clever, uh, me, came up with fake system D. So we built a package called, that basically just said, I provide system control. And then it had, uh, 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 I think it was a link to bin true was all that system control was. Um, and that satisfied the issue. The problem with that is Leonard and friends hated it. <laughs> Absolutely hated this. It also became, if you want, ended up wanting system D inside of the container, you had to jump through hoops to get uh, this uh, system D. It, you had to run this really weird yum command to remove fake system D and um, install real system D. So in rel, uh, and we never shipped this for Fedora. Actually, system D guys wouldn't let us get it into Fedora. So, uh, so we shipped it in rel 7.0. rel 7.1, we changed our minds. Okay, is Lucas in the room somewhere? Uh, there he is. So in RHEL uh, 7.1, I worked with the Lucas and friends of the uh, RHEL team to get a system D that didn't bring in all this extra crap with it. And so he rebuilt system D called system D container. And the problem is Leonard hated it. <laughs> so in RHEL 7.1, we had system D container. And the nice thing is that was real system D. It was just a, a, re, a remix of system D. So, RHEL 7.2 came along, and we have real systemd inside of the container, except the real systemd now has less requirements for um, these sub-packages. So systemd has gotten a lot smaller. Um, so as of RHEL 7.2, we are shipping systemd. In the Fedora and CentOS world, I think they're all shipping real systemd too. So the real systemd is now in the base container. That doesn't mean you can run it in the base container, because we're about to cover that. But anyways, it's in the, in the uh, base container. And everybody's happy now, right? When we first started doing containers, this, came, this article was written in 2014 by me, May 5th, 2014. And the article was explained how to run systemd within a container. And if you, anybody tries to run systemd inside of the container, they're still using this article, okay? Sadly, it's nearly two years old. A lot of stuff that's in there is no longer true, but sadly, one of the key things that's in there is still true, that you can't run systemd in a lockdown container. It has to be running privileged. So what is the benefits of running systemd in the container? This, this comes up a lot. This is really the war between Leonard and uh, Solomon. Docker containers expect PID1 to be your application. Okay, the way Docker would describe it, it is your PID1 inside of a container is your application, right? Microservices, the previous talk, talk, we want to have Apache be the PID1. In another container, I want to have MariaDB be the PID1. Um, Leonard thinks that's absolutely crazy, okay? The problem is that he would say that PID1 means certain things. So if you have a process one on a system, you have a uh, API that you need to support. Solomon says, no, you're crazy, it friggin' works, okay? So it works in like thou hundreds of thousands of cases, it works in Docker. So Docker's sort of proven that this kind of works, but sometimes it doesn't, okay? So one of the roles of PID1, according to Leonard, is that PID1 needs to clean up zombies, okay? If a process dies inside of your container, when it dies, somebody has to reap the, the, reap the process, otherwise the process will just sit around doing nothing. Um, so I've seen people run binge, bash in, as PID1 inside of the container and then run lots of applications. Bash doesn't know, oh, bash, actually bash does know. I've seen people run, I'm sorry, uh, if you run like sleep or something like that and then you exec into the container, when those processes die, they become zombies. All right, and the people that are doing testing on Oracle inside a container, they end up with hundreds of thousands of zombies inside of their containers because PID1 is supposed to reap the children. Default Docker containers write to syslog. What happens to the message after you write to syslog inside of a Docker container? 
it's gone. Nobody's listening on dev, dev log, okay? So anytime an application runs inside of a Docker, standard Docker container, when it writes to syslog, the message disappears from the planet. This goes to dev null. If we put journal D support into the container using system D, then we can get the syslog not messages, and we can get the syslog messages outside of the container. If we configure this properly, we're able to run journal control with the name of the container, and you'll be able to get messages out. Running apps as designed by the packager. If you've ever looked at all the Docker files that are up on, um, up on Docker I.O., you'll see lots and lots of really wacky startup scripts. Okay? It's like way back before, you know, in sister knit times when everybody wrote their own wacky bash scripts, and this is how people start up their process in PID1. If you run systemd inside of a container, you could have a Docker file that looks like that for running Apache. Okay? And then you're depending on the packager to have packaged it correctly, and, and everything runs. Okay? So there's real good benefits to running systemd inside of a container. The big downfall of it is now you're running more processes. So if I run just an Apache process, Inside of it, I don't have the Apache processes running in the container. If I'm running system D in it, now I have system D, journal D, and the Apache processes. So that's the, the there's cost and benefits, but you know, there's good reasons to run it and there's not so good. So I wanted to get, over the last two years since I wrote that article, I wanted to get Docker Daemon to run system D inside of the container in non-privileged mode. If you run systemd end spawn, systemd runs perfectly well inside of systemd end spawn container. It doesn't run inside of Docker. Okay, the reason is when systemd comes up, it expects the world to be set up the way systemd wants. It expects slash run to be on a temp fs. It expects fsc group to be mounted. It expects etsy machine id to be created. And it expects, I guess that's, those are probably the only three things. Okay, so we started working on it. So the first pass at it is we, if you run, if you set up container UUID inside of a container, system D will set, see that and it will create machine ID if it doesn't exist. This, all this patch did was set an environmental variable for it uh, inside of every container out of Docker. Docker didn't like it, they closed it. Next pass, a patch to set support for system D is PID1 in the container, closed. Next pass, implement journal control and journal data within a Docker container, closed. Have Docker register its machine with uh, machine control, closed. You see a trend here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully everybody can read that. Jesse Frizzell, one of the main maintainers of Docker uh, patches at DockerCon this year, tweeted this out. She actually tweeted it at me. So it says there, I say no to system D specific pull request. So you get a feeling that Docker really doesn't want system D running inside that container. The latest attempt. In run C, run C now has a feature called hooks. Oh, in run C, you're able to basically put an executable on the system, and run C will run a pre-start hook and a post-start hook on that executable. So it'll actually execute the executable and do pre-start and execute the executable and do post-start. That got accepted into run C. So we had a patch called Docker hooks that would look in a specific directory. And if there was executables in that directory, use a live Docker hooks.d, then it will automatically create a hook based on those executables. Docker didn't like it. <laughs> Well, we're carrying it in Docker 1.10. <laughs> so as of Docker 1.10, we should be able to run, we're creating hooks to uh, be able to basically work better with systemd. The nice thing about this patch is it's probably about five lines long, so carrying it is not as big a pain. Systemd has a feature called machine control. What machine control actually does is actually monitors all the VMs, in containers on the system that system D knows about. So if you run a system D end spawn, it tells machine control, hey, I just created a container, here's its name. 
if you run libvir containers um, using vert sandbox, it tells system D, it tells system D about it. If you run VMs on your system, libvir will tell it. So you can actually use machine control to show all the virtualization running on your system, except of course Docker, because Docker doesn't play with system D. We had patches, one of the previous patches that was killed was basically having Docker tell machine control, hey, I got a container running. So we created, so since the uh, OCI is the Open Container Initiative, which is run C's underneath, we're submitting a package to it called OCI Register Machine, and it's basically a hook. When the hook, when you start up a run C container, it will call OCI uh, Register Machine for the pre-start, which will tell system D that I'm starting a container. When you exit, it will tell system D that the container is exiting. Uh, all containers will be, any container run under run C will actually be uh, logged with uh, machine control. And this shows, uh, shows it running under run C. And since we're having the Docker uh, hook, um, since we have the Docker hooks patch, we can actually do it with Docker. So we're able to get machine control, can do things like start and stop containers, well, it can stop containers. And eventually, we want to get it higher, uh, more features in it. But if you use machine control, you can actually start to watch containers on your system as of Docker 110. By the way, Docker 110 gets shipped today. We're going to get these patches out, uh, or these packages out into uh, Fedora hopefully very soon. So, running systemd without privilege. We've created an OCI system D hook. And what that will do is it runs, it'll set up your tempfs to run on top of slash run and slash temp inside of the container. Before someone asks me this patch, the, if I mount a tempfs um, in Docker now on top of a directory, it actually untars the actual contact of the image and then ties it on top of the slash run. So if you have slash run slash uh, HTTPD inside of your container image, when you put a tempfs on top of it, it'll actually tie that up and put it on top of the slash temp. In Docker 1.10 now, there is a dash, dash I, I got a patch accepted to do dash dash tempfs, so you can actually do a Docker run uh, Fedora dash dash tempfs slash run, and it'll do that feature. It'll, that's in real Docker. But OCI systemd is going to take advantage of that and set up run and tempfs. It also is, creates a directory called Violog journal D UUID on the host system. Because this is where, if you want to get your logs out of the container onto the host, this is where you, um, where you'll, we hook that up. And it mounts that Violog, it mounts that into the container at Violog journal D. Creates Etsy machine ID in the container with the container's UUID. And then eventually, eventually it will mount SysFS system, uh, C group systemd into the container, and that would allow, that will fully allow systemd to run in a non privileged container in the environment that it wants. One thing that we can't do is get systemd to exit properly when it runs inside of a container. So when you run a con Docker containers and you do a Docker stop, it sends a sig term to the PID1 of the container. Okay, so it sends sig term. The problem is system D says sig term to system D means reload yourself. Okay, and that's what Leonard says is the standard procedure of a PID one process is when you get sig term, it doesn't mean die; it means restart yourself. The problem is system D does not like sig term. It wants actually this is this slide's wrong. It doesn't want sig power. It actually wants I think it's sig power plus three. It's a really weird, you'll, you'll see it in a second when I do the demo. Um, so it wants this really weird thing. But the nice thing is at least Docker now supports sending random stop signals to a container. So you can set up a container and tell it the correct stop signal if you're going to run a systemd-based container. We can't, in, we can't, because of the way hooks work, is we can't set this up automatically. So you're going to have to set this up in your Docker run line. Time for a quick demo before I run out of time. At this point, I lost my glasses. Yeah. 
tough to get old. Everybody see that? Okay. So, when I did this demo before, when I, I did this demo at System D Conf, one of the problems is we need, uh, at this point, is the OCI System D doesn't mount the uh, C groups yet inside the container. So we had to mount this. Uh, we had to mount the uh, C groups. I mean, not C groups. Uh, Sys FS C group into the container. When we do that, if you just mount, bind mount in uh, SysFS C groups, that actually bind mounts read writable. So I, the demo I was doing was actually mounting it with colon read only, which would make the mount point read only, but all its children would still, read, uh, would still be rewritable. So I actually wrote a little script. And That actually goes out and mounts, it takes the entire C group hierarchy, mounts it in slash run as read only. And then I mount that into the container. So that's what this script is doing. So I set up a uh, Apache container, sell privileges, and there you go. You have systemd running inside of a container. If I go to another window, and I do machine control, you'll see a Docker container running. If I looked at the processes running locked down, you will see systemd, journaldd, systemd journal, httpd, the dbus daemon, and a bunch of Apache processes. That's in a fully locked down container. And if I do There is the journal. These are all the syslog messages. Everything that's written is the syslog and all the messages that happen inside the container are going to the journal. So to me, this is the proper way. If you're going to run systemd inside of a container, we can get it all set up and running. Um, and that's basically it. Oh, and then the last step. Shutting down the container, you'll see that system D got the proper signal, so it shut down properly. Any questions? That's it. Yes? What user was you Root. Containers don't contain. Don't think crazy stuff. But yeah, if you were using user namespace, when, when user namespace finally comes on, it, it would work fine with the user namespace. So it would be theoretically could run as non root. Yes? That Docker file is the one I showed you before, the three-liner. So it's just uh, yum install, HTTPD, and enable it. And I was supposed to give these out when people ask questions, so. <laughs> if you already have one. Oh, you're a speaker? No. You have one? <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Right, because it's in journal D, so I can destroy the container and the journals. Okay. They're still, they'll be there. They're there. They're there. They ain't going anywhere. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't. I, I actually told you, I, the previous slide, you, ha you can now pass the, sig the signal that system D wants it to Docker, so it will work. Right, I had that little script put out the stop signal line. All right, if I run the, if I, I'll show you what is actually. So that's the line that it actually puts out. So stop, that's what it is. Uh, IT minimum plus three is what system D expects. Five minutes. I get five more minutes. Any other questions? Yes, Lucas. 
Yeah, system, system control dash M. It, not yet, it'll stop the, it'll, that'll work to stop the container, I believe. Because we know it's no unit. Right. Right. Right, we can't, that. Right. Yeah, we, we don't do that yet, but that's, that's my long range goal, is that that'll work. Yes. So, so the, question, the question he's asking is, where do I see this going in the long run, because Docker is so hostile to system D? Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's, it's actually, uh, Rocket is a lot friendlier to system D, but I, I don't think it's a problem. I think we can fix the Docker problems by working outside of, uh, outside of the, the realm of Docker a little bit. So I, I, think, I think both worlds are going to survive. I actually think in the long run, we're going to be moving a lot more towards run C. All right. Yep. Can you clarify the relationship between Run C and Docker? Like okay, so, so Docker currently uses a thing called libcontainer. All right, OCI, OCI Open Container Initiative, took libcontainer and made, oh, Docker took libcontainer and made a, put it into this, this organization. So libcon, theoretically, Docker no longer controls libcontainer. The secondary feature of that is they actually built Run C, and Run C actually owns libcontainer now. So there's a run C package in open. If you went to open container on, and, and, and sucked out run C, you would see libcontainer. That's what Docker now uses in, internally. We believe that in the long run, Docker is going to, instead of using libcontainer directly, is going to create the JSON file and exec run C. The reason they're going to do that is they want to support alternative backends. So for instance, they have to go through all sorts of hoops to support the Windows backend. But what they might do is basically move it to a OCI specific uh, container, and then you'd be able to run Windows in that, or, or other tools. So that eventually there would probably be clear Linux containers would have a OCI backend. So eventually you'll be able to tell Docker when you're starting it to use run C, maybe use clear Linux containers, maybe use Windows, and, and that way they can have different backends as long as they follow the, follow the OCI specification. No, Docker is actually still sitting out there like, it basically, it's like it's system D. It's watching what run C does. It's taking all the standard in, standard error, standard out from run C and bringing it back to the client. So, so think of, think, always think of the Docker daemon as being a, an alternative version of system D, because that's really what they're building. It's a process manager, all right? Docker's also announcing that they're building this thing called container D, okay? And container D is yet another version of system D, okay? <laughs> So container D, so Docker has a lot of problems with running, monitoring containers, so they're actually going to thinking about building a new thing called container D, which will run lots of run Cs underneath it, and somehow Docker will interact with that. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. But Docker will not work with system D. If I was going to build run, com, uh, container D, I would call it system D machine control, but that would, that's a dirty word to Docker. Anybody else? Yes. Who's in charge of resource management? In, uh, if you're running regular Docker containers, Docker is in charge of resource management. So if you are running a container um, and you want to change its running attributes, system control, you know, C groups will not work. Okay, well, I mean, I guess if you figured out which C group it is, it would work, but you'd, you're supposed to use Docker update. If you're running run C, then all the system D tools will work. I'm out of time, so that's it. Thank you. And a lot. <laughs> Oops.